Alrighty, part two of the three-part series which sets out to make your repots the best ever experience for you enjoying the process without having any doubts as to if you're doing the right thing or being too heavy-handed but also for your orchid to come out of the stressful process without so much of a hiccup. Because let's call it for what it is, no matter how gentle we are, a repot is stressful for an orchid. What we can do is implement certain measures to reduce the stress, but to think of a repot as nothing short of stressful would be misleading. Also, please remember that every repot is a transition process for the orchid roots. It makes no difference if you're growing in inorganic or organic media. It makes no difference if you're sticking with the same media characteristics and mix as previously. The mere fact that you are changing the media changes the climate of the pot that the roots of your orchids were previously accustomed to. This translates into your new organic media could be drier, less water retentive as the previous old media, which may have become more absorbent, more water retentive over time, and the roots of your orchids are accustomed to that extra water around them. Organic media will repel water for the first couple of months depending on the size of your bark. If you choose to mix in sphagnum moss, then you are balancing out the dryness to a degree. So. Please do not think that because you are using the same composition when it comes to media, your orchid will not be transitioning, it will. Usually we equate transitioning to an orchid going from organic to inorganic media or vice versa, or a potted orchid being moved to a mount that is also a transition and vice versa, moving a mounted orchid into a pot. Every time we do something with the roots of our orchids as far as disturbance is concerned, they go through a transition phase. That is top tip observation point numero uno. Welcome to this video, I hope that you are doing well. Thank you so much for clicking on it. And while that is already amazing support, I kindly ask you to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, thank you in advance if you choose to subscribe. Now, if you do want to help someone else out with their repotting, share this video and make repotting confidence boosting and stress-free for someone else as well. Muchas gracias. Before actually getting into the repot, if your orchid leaves need cleaning, do it now while the orchid is stable in the pot. We do not want to be jiggling the orchid after repotting by doing this task. If that is what you choose to do after a repot, preferably get that out of the way before you get into the pot. Remember I said there's nothing gentle about a repot, but there are some things we can do to at least mitigate the damage a repot will cause to the existing root system. Well, we often hear that we should gently squeeze the pot to loosen any roots from the media and possibly those that have attached to the pot. We can be as gentle as we want in this squeezing process, but believe me when I say that squeezing will already do substantial damage to a root system because we are pushing media against soft roots as per the pre-soak we discussed in part one of this three-part series, which is linked in the description. Part three will also be linked once that video has aired. So check out the description if you have not seen the pre-repot tips video. Personally, I prefer the attempt at gently squeezing a pot to dislodge roots. It makes me feel better, but just know that it will not always result in not damaging an existing root system. So be kind to yourself when you get your orchid out of the pot and see damage, snapped, cracked, or torn up roots. This is collateral damage and it is inevitable 80% of the time, unfortunately. Now, sometimes we are lucky enough to be able to get an orchid out of a pot by just the gently squeezing method. Many times, an orchid will be completely pot-bound, full of roots, and squeezing is just not possible because the pot is rock hard. Clay pot growers, I hear you. I was a clay pot grower for many years. I have some tips for you coming up. But if you happen to have a pot-bound orchid and the root system has eaten up every single bit of space, congratulate yourself on your excellent orchid cultivation. Take that feeling and use it to your advantage because as you have gotten your orchid to grow a root system like the one you just got out of the pot, the damage you are doing now will not be a detriment to the orchid you can regrow a solid root system again and not all of the older root system will be lost. But in order to get an orchid that is pot bound out of a pot, there is no other way of doing it without going the radical route. You may need to sacrifice the pot and cut that off or even use a mallet 
to encourage the separation of the roots from the pot. So in this instance, I have a little tip. If squeezing the pot rubs media against roots and does some damage to the existing root system, imagine what crushing damage a mallet does when banging against the pot. Or, as I have had to do in the past, roll the pot on the floor and push down with my foot to loosen the orchid from the pot. Most of the roots in that instance where I have my foot would be smushed. Well, if you're using a mallet or anything of the sorts in a radical situation like that, I highly recommend that you focus the hammering on the pot to the lower third of the pot, the base of the pot, as well as more towards the back area when considering the direction of growth the orchid has, as opposed to the front. If you have to venture around the perimeter of the pot, then stay away from the new growth area and always target your blows to the lower third of the pot. And for good measure, it does not hurt to use the bottom of the pot and target some blows in that area because eventually the orchid will come out. Trust me, I've done this many times. While removing the orchid from your pot, keep an eye out for the root tips. If you can, make sure that you tip the pot away in the opposite direction of the new roots. We're going to try and protect those root tips as best as possible from any abrasions. So quick side note, orchids and sphagnum moss will have less root damage but will also incur other kinds of stress as you try to remove as much of the moss as possible. So as a side note tip, do not try and remove all the moss if you're dealing with a fine root system. There's no need to stress roots out just because it is in our human nature to have everything super cleaned up. Remember that in doing a full pedantic cleanup, it would also remove the beneficial microbes that have settled in the pot. Leaving some old media on the existing root system not only protects the existing root system, but also carries over the beneficials into the new media where they can continue their harmonious relationship of gas exchange, which the roots benefit from. Now, if your orchid does not have that many old roots to snip off and you are considering an up pot, a larger pot size and fill around with media then you are golden there really is no need to fuss with cutting off a few old roots you can but it's not a must for reasons i explained with the beneficials that will be on the older roots and can be transferred to the fresh media the best kind of repot is an up pot when it comes to how to gently repot an orchid however because of the famous gas exchange that takes place in the pots of our orchids a pot bound root system often needs to be cleaned up even if the majority of the root system is viable. There is absolutely no problem going into a viable root system and snipping out healthier roots in the back 30% of the way up from the bottom of the length of a root to where it is growing out of the base of the orchid. Think of it like this, you're giving the orchid root system a bob cut. What I do and highly recommend you take on board for future repots of such pot bound orchids is to clean up the root ball from back to front because these are the first roots back there that would eventually die off first as they do have a lifespan and those are the ones that usually are in the back. In order to establish a healthy pot climate for maximum oxygen exchange and other gas exchanges we do not need to go all the way around the orchid we just need to create sufficient space for new roots to find their way for the coming two to three years before we actually have to repot again. Clean the root ball up from back to front. This protects the newer roots that will continue doing their job in the years to come, as well as the actual new roots growing and give everyone space to continue growing, including branching, should you have an orchid that also branches on older roots. While I always advocate that we take our time with repots, we do have to be efficient as to how long a repot should take. There is no time limit. A repot can take hours or minutes. Do not get me wrong. It all depends. But while the process is ongoing, always keep your roots damp and misted. Do not let them dry out. Even if you grow your orchids using a wet dry cycle, know that any dry roots will be more prone to snapping and incur further damage during handling than damp roots. If if you have to step away because a repot is taking up more time than initially allocated, either use a paper towel and cover the roots with that while always maintaining the paper towel wet 
or submerge the roots in water for the duration of being exposed to the ambient air. Do not allow the water to touch the base of the orchid, because water will wick up the velamen and any new growth may get saturated, which risks it getting rot and failing. Continue your repotting project as soon as possible. And before we actually get into the repot proper and get her situated, this is a great time to inspect the orchid from all angles while she's out of the pot. This way you can look everywhere where you would normally not be able to see properly and check for any pests and deal with them straight away. Okay, clay pot growers, I have not forgotten you. Back in the day when I had my orchids and clay pots with bark of different sizes, as much as I could cobble together in a country that did not cater for orchid growers on any level, I rarely took my orchids out of their pots. Instead, after their soak, I would get rid of as much of the old media as I could, and if that meant shaking the pot upside down, orchids and all included, then that is what I did. After which, I just filled the pot up with media again. I know that this sounds like the lazy way, but consider the alternative. A well-rooted in orchid will have roots growing outside of the perimeter of the pot as well, and I was not prepared to compromise those wonderful roots just because I wanted everything to be looking absolutely perfect and to my liking. While we should try to make the orchids look as aesthetically pleasing to our eye, oftentimes we do more damage in trying to get that result as opposed to thinking of what is best for the orchid long term. Viable roots that have circled the pot exterior will be tough to remove, and if there is still space in the pot, then why disturb those roots to try to manipulate them into the pot? Clearly they seem to be perfectly happy where they are, right? So if you need a bigger pot because your orchid is actually growing over the edge, then opt for a larger pot and place the older pot in the middle and just fill the gaps with the media and you are done. This is the up pot way when it comes to growing in clay pots the way I used to do it. And it is the least headache or worrisome for the orchids. But there will come a time when this way of potting up your orchid has reached its limits. But by that time, your orchid will have grown to such a size that it's going to handle a radical root tearing up repot much better, seeing as it will have doubled the structures in another three years. Or what you can do is curl up your sleeves get some safety glasses. You will need them because after you have engaged your superpower called courage, break the pot with a hammer and get the orchid out of the pot with as many roots intact as you possibly can, which I have done as well, but doing that hurt me as well as my orchid for quite some time. Sometimes though, needs must. But if you want to save your clay pots for future use, then after your pre-soak and you're teasing the roots off the outer edges of the pot with your extremely thin implement to the best of your ability, once again, engage your superpower called courage and implement the pull and rip method. Your orchid will come out of the pot, not unscathed, but she will come out of the pot. No matter how you manage to get your orchid out of the pot, at the end of the day, when it comes to potting her up, this is the fast and fun part, and in my opinion, the less stressful part for everybody involved. After all the cleanup, pot your orchid up in the middle of the pot, if possible, and space permitting, especially seedlings. Seeing as we're not wanting to have to disturb our orchid for another two or three years, growth could be coming out where we least expect them, and I have found that out the hard way. Some orchid roots are so stiff, even while wet, they will not be manipulated into the pot so that the orchid has a better, more aesthetic positioning in the pot for the years to come. So the orchid looks wonky. The new growths may not grow in the center, meaning that another intervention may be on the cards sooner than absolutely necessary, because roots are at risk of growing out of the pot. And this is especially important if you remove bulbs from your orchid. Sometimes this action will trigger a viable eye in the back of the rhizome to develop another lead. And put that rhizome at the edge of the pot and only focusing on the main growing point could pose issues as well, which we can avoid by potting the orchid up in the middle of the pot. Also, once centered, consider positioning your orchid as low in the pot as possible and hold her down in doing so. This way, as you start to fill the pot with media, you will be able to raise the orchid bit by bit with gentle jiggles and allow for the media to fill the gaps around the base, around the bottom of the pot, around any roots that find themselves down there. 
In addition to that, if you think it is best to secure your orchid in the pot, use some form of support to make her stay rock solid in her position that you have designated for her, otherwise she is going to become independent and move around. It is paramount to protect new root tips from any form of abrasion when handling the orchid in the coming weeks. Supports are optional, in my opinion, and it is a personal decision based on the stability or lack thereof of the orchid after the repot is done. Sometimes having left on the older root system, be it viable or not, will be sufficient as a form of anchoring, but sometimes there are just not enough roots to guarantee stability. So ensure you are comfortable with how to ensure stability of your orchid and if in doubt a support will not be in your way no matter how quickly the orchid may root in and stabilize all by herself. And please, if you are an organic media grower, please, please, please do not push the media down as a form of supporting and securing the orchid in the pot. We were talking about how we bash our roots already trying to get the orchid out after trying to be as gentle as possible through the process of cutting old roots. The last thing we want to do is get the new media in and start pressing it in and down because we're going to be smushing those roots that we have left by forcing the media into the pot in an attempt to secure the orchid. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, please leave all of that in the comments. And speaking of organic media growers, I have some more tips here for you. I used to pop my orchids up with new media being damp because as mentioned at the beginning, every repot is a transition and new organic media, excluding sphagnum moss, usually has water repelling qualities. So I used to have mine soaking in a bucket of just water and used it damp to fill in my pots. This way, the already saturated roots will not be hit with something so dry right out of the gate. Both media and roots can gently dry out together. And if I may add one suggestion, that is all it is, it's just a suggestion. If you're going to adopt the damp organic media route, then please do not soak your new media in a mix of CalMag or seaweed. The reason being, after the pre-soak, the orchid roots are saturated with these goodies you already had mixed up for the soak. During the repot, your roots have been kept saturated. They are not absorbing any more nutrients. Their codex cannot take up any more water. So if you soak your organic media with nutrients, the media will absorb the nutrients, but the roots are incapable of absorbing anything the media may have stored, resulting in the moisture will evaporate out of the media, leaving unused nutrients behind and possibly developing salt far too soon, which no amount of flushing is going to release. Save your product, only use it for the pre-repot soak and save your new media from accumulating salts far too quickly. For inorganic media, I recommend you fill your pot with water before adding your media. No matter if you choose Lekka, Lava Rock, Pumice or River Rock, etc. Whichever inorganic media you prefer to use, use the water to act as a cushion between the media filling the pot, coming into contact with the vulnerable, soft and sometimes bruised roots. Water around the roots will ensure that the lecker will fall into crevices where we cannot get to. Lava Rock won't hit the velamen forcefully with its weight and sharp edges. And also remember, you have tweezers to position your inorganic media if it is a little larger, resulting in bigger gaps than you would prefer. Take your time with anything other than lecker, which is relatively easy to distribute evenly. And if you have to use the layering method with other larger media, then check out the video I have attached right here at this moment in time. As a final measure with the water still in the pot, jiggle the pot once more once your orchid is at the height of the pot that you would deem best for your climate. In doing this, you will see how the media will settle one final time, which also results in some more gaps being filled, especially when it comes to LECA. Top tip to consider for your peace of mind, no matter the choice of your media, if you're in a dry climate, Keep your orchid lower in the pot because the humidity retention will be higher, ensuring roots will not dry out prematurely. And if you are in a high humidity situation, then of course you are free to level the base of the orchid out with the level of the pot that you find works best for you. Then, as a final measure, drain the pot and see where your media has settled. This is a good time to fuss with any exposed roots or media too close to the root tips that could affect the continued progress of the same. Either way, if you need to, 
fill the pot with a little bit more media or leave as is and see what you may need to adjust in the future. Before I let you go though, let me ask you, what do you do in your repotting routine? Is there anything that you do differently or that you do that I have not mentioned? Something you want to add which helps your orchids and you out? Please share that in the comments because it is very easy for us to fall into our routine which works for us, but there are so many other things that could also be added, which we had not thought of, and they are super helpful. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with the rest of us orchid hobbyists. In a separate video, I am featuring the post repot care, which may or may not already have been linked in the description. So have a look down there to see if it's linked. If not, watch this space and stay tuned. And there's something that I find is important after a repot. We always tend to forget that in our busy lifestyle. Following any repot, give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts in a repot, so by the time you've finished one, look at your orchid and yes, give yourself a well-deserved pat on your back. I hope this was helpful and wish you a wonderful repotting season. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. The support is much needed and much appreciated. Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.